नमो तस्स भगवतो अरहतो नमो तस्स भगवतो अरहतो सम्मास नमो तस्स भगवतो अरहतो सम्मास Hello everyone, welcome to every day, every Sunday Tamato. I hope you have been practicing for the past week as well and smiling and looking at the life in a fun way and taking up the practice in each of the activities that you were doing. We will continue where we left last Sunday. Last time we took up the topic of, of spiritual friend so i'm going to continue the suktas that uh, there are, there are a few suktas that we left and i hope to continue uh, complete the topic of spiritual friends maybe uh, suktas from anguttara nikaya okay this is from the book of nine first sukta enlightenment May, are you looking on the book? Um, yeah, Mr. Singh, it would be nice if you could share the uh, uh, one four page. five uh, book of nine. Yes, it's on page number one two four five. Oh, one two four five. Okay, so then uh, hopefully those who are going to listen in today or in the recording uh, if they have the book then it will be good reference for them as well okay, thank you okay uh, I'm going to start the reading it's on the books of nine uh, book of nine first sutta enlightenment thus have I heard on one occasion the blessed one was dwelling at Savati in Jitta's grove, Anantapindika's park. There the blessed one addressed the bhikkhus. Bhikkhus, venerable sir, those bhikkhus replied. The blessed one said this. Bhikkhus, wanderers of other sects may ask you, what, friends, is the proximate cause for the development of the age to enlightenment? If you are asked thus, how would you answer them? Bante, our teachings are rooted in the Blessed One, guided by the Blessed One. Take resource in the Blessed One. It would be good if the Blessed One would clear up the meaning of this statement. Having heard it from him, the bhikkhus we retain it in the mind. Then listen, bhikkhus, and attain closely. I will speak. Yes, Bhante, those bhikkhus replied. The blessed one said this. Bhikkhus, if wanderers of other sects should ask you, what, friend, is the proximate cause for the development of the age to enlightenment, you should answer them as follows. So, before we move further into the sutta, here Buddha is asking his students that are bhikkhus, and now we are the students of the Buddha's teaching. So, students, oh, what will you answer if there is somebody from the other tradition asking you, what is the proximate cause for the development of the East to enlightenment? What uh, what are the steps that we need to follow for the enlightenment? Then what will you answer? In that way, Buddha is asking the students. And here the student says, Bhante, Buddha, I, our teachings are rooted in the blessed one and have your refuge. If we, if you uh, would answer this statement, we will remember it correctly. Then they said, and the Buddha says, listen and attend closely. And now the Buddha starts to speaking up. Here, friends, a student has good friends, good companions, good comrades. This is the first proximate cause for the development of the age to enlightenment. 
So first cause is the good friends and comrades and good companions. This is the first cause. Again, friend, a student is virtuous. He dwells restrained by the Patimukha. This uh, Patimukha is the rules for the bhikkhus and for us, the five precepts or the six precepts that we are taking, these is for us. Possessed of good conduct and resort, seeing danger in minute faults, having undertaken the training rules, he trains in them. He, this is the second proximate cause. So the second one is to keep the precepts and seeing the danger in the slightest faults. Again, friends, a student gets to hear at will without trouble or difficulty. Talk concerned with the austerity life that is conducive to opening up the heart that is Talks on fewness of desires, on contentment, on solitude, on not getting bound up with others, on arousing energy, on virtuous behavior, on concentration, on wisdom, on liberation, on the knowledge and vision of liberation. This is the proximate cause for the development of the age to enlightenment. So the third one is here, listening to the Dhamma talk, lending an ear, and uh, listening to talk that are concerned to fewness of desires and arousing of energy, some that is related to the practice. That's what we are doing here in, in, in every Sunday. Again, friend, a student has aroused energy for abandoning unwholesome qualities and acquiring wholesome qualities. He is strong, firm in exertion, not casting off the duties of cultivating wholesome qualities. This is the fourth proximate cause for the, in, for the development of the age to enlightenment. So here it is talking about the right effort, arousing energy for the abandoning of unwholesome qualities. Whatever thoughts or hindrances that are coming up, we are letting them go and Arousing energy to develop the wholesome qualities. Again, friend, a student is wise. He possesses the wisdom that discerns arising and passing away, which is noble and penetrative and leads to the complete destruction of suffering. This is the fifth proximate cause for the development of the aged enlightenment. So the fifth one is understanding the arising and passing away. This is for the wise. Student understands this through his practice, through knowing and seeing what is happening in our meditation, in our daily life. What is the condition? What is the arising? How the suffering is arising? How the thoughts are arising? How the moment is being, moment of mind's attention is being moved? We understand dependent origination, how the contact, how the feeling, how the clinging, how habitual tendency, how habitually we are reacting. And understanding this, the person becomes wise. Understanding, oh, I'm acting through clinging. Okay, I let go of it, relax my and do it in a wholesome way. And whenever the mind starts acting with craving, we let go of it, relax my and do it in a wholesome, loving kindness way. When a student, when students, a student has good friends, good companions, and good comrades, it can be expected of him that he will be virtuous. One who dwells restrained by the precepts will train in them. When is Bhikkhu has good friends, good companions, good comrades, it can be expected of him that he will get to hear at will, without trouble or difficulty, talks connected with the austerity life, that is, conducive to opening up the heart, that is, talks on fewness of desire, on contentment, on solitude, on not getting bound up with others, 
on arousing energy, on virtuous behavior, on concentration, on wisdom, on liberation, on the knowledge and vision of liberation. When a bhikkhu has good friends, good companions, good comrades, it can be expected of him that he will arouse energy for the abandoning unwholesome qualities and acquiring wholesome qualities. He is strong, firm in exertion, not casting off the duties of cultivating wholesome qualities. When a student has good friends, good companions, good comrades, he can be expect it can be expected of him that he will be wise, possessing the wisdom that discerns arising and passing away, which is noble and penetrative and leads to the complete destruction of suffering. Okay, what uh, I just read is the, almost the same thing. But we, we can see that the first thing, good friends, good companions, and good com comrades, is if we have the first thing, it is possible for us to get to the virtuous behavior to hear at will. The Dhamma talks, talk, talks concerning to development of wisdom. And then if we have good friends and good companions, then we can arouse energy for the development of wholesome qualities and let go of unwholesome qualities. And also we can see if the person has good friends, good companions, then it can be expected that the person understands, is wise, and having the understanding of arising and passing away of the thoughts, of the destruction of suffering. All these are the causes only for the, if the first condition is right. And now it says, like, if this arises, that arises. Having based himself on this, these five things, a student should develop, should develop further another four things. The perception of unattractiveness should be developed to abandon lust. Loving kindness should be developed to abandon ill will, mindfulness of breathing should be developed. To cut off thoughts, the perception of impermanence should be developed to eradicate the conceit, I am. When one perceives impermanence, the perception of non-self is established. One who perceives non-self eradicates the conceit, I am which is Nibbana in this very life. We can see when these first five conditions are fulfilled, like when we have good friends, good com companions, and good comrades, then we can listen to the good Dhamma talk, one can be virtuous, one can arouse energy for practicing of the right effort, and then one can be wise to understand and let go of the unwholesome sufferings. And then when these are fulfilled, then one should further develop these another four things. That is, one should develop the perception of unattractiveness should be developed to abandon lust. And then loving kindness should be developed to abandon the ill will. And then mindfulness of breathing to be developed to cut off the thoughts. And then the perception of impermanence should be developed to, to eradicate the conceit, I am. If we look at it clearly, it says abandoning of three things, that is lust, hatred, and illusion. And when we let go of all these things, these are the stains of the mind, then when we let go of this, then it says when one let go of the conceit, I am, then it is have, having experienced the Nibbana in this very life. This was the first sutta, and the second sutta from this book is 9.3 Makhiya, Makhiya Sutta. Thus have I heard on one occasion the blessed one dwelling at Chalika on Mount Chalika. Now, on that occasion, the Venerable Makhiya was the Blessed One's attendant. Then the Venerable Makhiya approached the Blessed One 
paid homage to him, stood to one side and said to him, Bante, I would like to enter Jantugama for arms. You may do so, Magya, at your own convenience. Then in the morning, the venerable Magya dressed, took his bowl and robe and entered Jantugama for arms. When he has walked for arms in Jantugama, after his meals, on returning from his arms round, he went to the Bikku bank of the Kimikala River. As he was walking and wandering around for exercise along the bank of the Kimikala River, the Venerable Magya saw a lovely and delightful mango grove. It occurred to him, this mango grove is truly lovely and delightful, suitable for the striving of the clansman intent on striving. If the blessed one permits me, I will go back to this mango grove to strive. Then the venerable Magya approached the blessed one, paid homage to him, sat down to one side and said, This morning, Bante, I dressed, took my bow and robe, and entered Chantugama for arms. I thought, this mango grove is truly lovely and delightful, suitable for the striving of a clansman intent on striving. If the blessed one permits me, I will go back to the mango grove to strive. So if the blessed one would permit me, I will go back to the mango grove and strive. As we are alone, Magya, wait until other bhikkhus comes along. A second time, the venerable Magya said to the blessed one, Bante, for the blessed one there is nothing further to be done and no need, no increase what has been done. But Bante, I have something further to be done. I needed to increase what has been done. If the blessed one would permit me, I will go back to that mango grove to strive. As we are alone, Magya, Wait until another bhikkhu comes along. A third time, the venerable Magya said to the blessed one, Bante, for the blessed one has, there is nothing further to be done and no need to increase what has been done. But Bante, I have something further to be done and need to increase what has been done. If the blessed one would permit me, I will go back to the to that mango grove to strive. Since you speak of striving, Magya, what can I say to you? You may go at your own convenience. So here, this is the background story of what happened before uh, he went. Uh, Magya, Venerable Magya went to the Armstrong, taking his bowl and rope. And while he was walking along the banks of the river Kimikala, he saw a beautiful mango grove that was lovely. He thought that it would be good if I could go and practice it. And he, when he came, came back after his meal, he uh, paid homage to the blessed one, sat down to one side, and he said, Bante, I would I have seen this place, um, this mango grove. I want to go and practice my meditation over there. And then Buddha says, okay, wait for a while. We are alone now. Let other monks come back, and we will go together or something like that. And then... Buddha say, while Buddha says all this to wait, but uh, Venerable Magya was so much intent upon striving that he said, mm, Buddha, you have no, you have already been enlightened now, uh, in nothing more to develop, so you have already known what had to be known, but I am not yet enlightened, so I need to practice, I need to strive, I need to develop and increase whatever I have developed further. So he said that for the first time, second time, and the third time. And the Buddha said, wait, but he did not listen. And then Buddha says, okay, you you make it go at your own convenience, Buddha said. Now what happens is, then the venerable Makiya rose from his seat, paid homage to the blessed one, circumambulated him, keeping the right side toward him, and went to the mango grove. He entered and sat down at the foot of a tree to pass the day. Then, while the Venerable Magya 
was dwelling in that mango grove. Three kinds of bad, unwholesome thoughts frequently occurred to him. Sensual thoughts, thoughts of ill will, and thoughts of harming. It then occurred to him, this is truly astounding and amazing. I have gone forth out of faith from the household life into homelessness. Yet I am still stopped by these three kinds of bad, unwholesome thoughts. Sensual thoughts, thoughts of ill will and thoughts of harming. Then the Venerable Magia approached the Blessed One, paid homage to him, sat down to one side and said, Here, Bhante, while I was dwelling in that mango grove, three kinds of bad, unwholesome thoughts frequently occurred to me. Sensual thoughts, thoughts of ill will and thoughts of harming. It then occurred to me, this is truly astounding and amazing. I have gone forth out of faith from the household life into homelessness, yet I am still stopped by these three kinds of bad, unwholesome thoughts, sensual thoughts, thoughts of ill will and thoughts of harming. Maghya, when liberation of mind has not matured, five things leads to its maturation. What five? So he was in, he entered the mango grove and he when he started meditating, he was been having thoughts of sensual desire or um, thoughts of ill will and thoughts of harming. And then he came back from that mango grove and asked Buddha, Bhante, I was meditating and even though I have gone through, all these thoughts are still coming in my mind. I don't know. He said, guide me, Bhante, in that way. Now the Buddha says, when the mind, when liberation of mind has not matured, five things leads to its maturation. What five? So now the Buddha will tell, if the mind is not liberated, what are the five things that helps us in maturing that liberation? The first thing is, here, Magia, a, a student has good friends, good companions, good comrades. When liberation of mind has not matured, this is the first thing that leads to its maturation. So the first thing is good friends, good companions, and good comrades. Then it will lead to the maturation of liberation. Again, a student is virtuous. He dwells restrained by the precepts possessed of good conduct and resort, seeing danger in minute faults. Having undertaken the precepts, he trains in them. When liberation of mind has not matured, this is the second thing that leads to its maturation. So this is the second thing, having uh, good friends, good companions. The second thing is he trains in the precepts, he keeps his precepts and this is the second thing that leads to maturation of liberation. Again, a student gets to hear at will without trouble or difficulty. Talk concerned with the austere life that is conducive to opening up the heart. That is, talk on fewness of desires, on contentment, on solitude, on not getting bound up with others on arousing energy, on virtuous behavior, on concentration, on wisdom, on liberation, on the knowledge and vision of liberation. When liberation of mind has not matured, this is the third thing that leads to its maturation. As the previous sutta, here also the third thing is hearing at will, being able to listen to the talks, and being able to give an ear and talks that are on fewness of desires, on opening up of the heart, on the release or the relaxing of letting go, and then arousing of energy, of constant effort that is required, on virtuous behavior, on precepts, on wisdom, on liberation, on the knowledge and vision of liberation. This is the third thing. Again, a student has aroused energy, 
for abandoning unwholesome qualities and acquiring wholesome qualities, he is strong, firm in exertion, not casting off the duties of cultivating wholesome qualities. When liberation of mind has not matured, this is the fourth thing that leads to its maturation. So the fourth thing is arousing of energy to abandoning the unwholesome qualities and developing the wholesome qualities. <coughs> and also um, firm exertion. He is strong, not casting off the duty of cultivating wholesome qualities. This is putting the right effort. Like even if you feel like drowsy, dull or something, you feel like not meditating a day, still you put energy and keep your practice going. Practice meditation at least for half an hour. This is the fourth thing that leads to its when the liberation of mind's maturation. Again, a student is wise. He possesses the wisdom that discerns arising and passing away, which is noble and penetrative, leads to the complete destruction of suffering. When liberation of mind has not matured, this is the fifth thing that leads to its maturation. So the fifth thing is having possessed and the student being wise and knowing the this is the arising, this is the passing away and the complete destruction of suffering. This is the fourth, fifth reason for the maturation of liberation. When Magia, a student has good friends, good comrades, good companions, it can be expected of him that he will be virtuous one who dwells restrained by precepts, possessed of good conduct and resort, seeing danger in minute faults, having undertaken the tra training rules, he trains in them. When a student has good friends, good companions and good comrades, it can be expected of him that he will get to hear at will. Without trouble or difficulty, talk concerned with austerity life that is conducive to opening up the heart, that is, talk on fewness of desire, on contentment, on solitude, on not getting bound up with the other, on arousing energy, on virtuous behavior, on collectiveness, on wisdom, on liberation, on the knowledge and vision of liberation. When a bhikkhu has good friends, good companions, good comrades, it can be expected of him that he will arouse energy for abandoning of for the abandoning unwholesome qualities and acquiring wholesome qualities. He is strong, firm in exertion, not casting off the duty of cultivating wholesome qualities. When a student has good friends, good companions, good comrades, it can be expected of him that he will be wise, possessing the wisdom that discerns arising and passing away, which is noble and penetrative and leads to the complete destruction of suffering. So again, it's the same thing as the previous sukta, where for all these five things, for them to come to maturation of liberation, one should have good friendship, wise fan, wise companions and wise comrades. Having based himself on these five things, the student should develop further four things. The perception of unattractiveness should be developed to abandon lust. Loving kindness should be developed to abandon ill will. Mindfulness of breathing should be developed to cut off thoughts. The perception of impermanence should be developed to eradicate the conceit, I am. When one perceives impermanence, the perception of non-self is established. One who perceives non-self eradicates the conceit, I am, which is Nibbana in its very life. This sutta is very much similar to the previous sutta. The major difference is here it is saying 
if the uh, friends are good, then one can get liberated. But here, for the liberation to be come to maturation, for the liberation to happen, one should have good friends. It all starts with good companions, good friends, and good comrades. And uh, this is what the sutta is. Next sutta is 9.6. This is on page number 1256 on Amutar Nikaya, Bhikkhu Bodhi translation. Sukta means association. Okay. Uh, this Sukta uh, is having some that is part I don't feel like reading because uh, it is, if I keep reading, you will come to know. Uh, it's mostly to the moms, to the bhikkhus, but we can still connect it to our own life. I'll keep reading. Dear the Venerable Sariputta, address the bhikkhus. Friends, bhikkhus. Friend, those bhikkhus replied. The Venerable Sariputta said this. Friends, person should be understood to be twofold those to be associated with and those not to be associated with. Ropes too should be understood to be twofold, those to be used and those not to be used. Arms food, lodgings too should be understood to be twofold, those to be used and those not to be used. Villages or towns should be understood to be twofold, those to be resorted to and those not to be resorted to. Countries or religions, regions should be understood to be twofold, those to be resorted to and those not to be resorted to. So I am going to read the first part where it is uh, given as person should be understood as twofold, those to be associated with and those not to be associated with. This relating to the spiritual friends or the good friends, good companions, whom should be associated and whom should be not associated. When it was said, person's friends should be understood to be twofold, those to be associated with and those not to be associated with, for what reason was this said? If one knows of a person, when I associate with this person, unwholesome qualities increase in me and wholesome qualities decline. And the requisites of life that should be obtained by one gone for robes, arms for lodging and medicines and provisions for the sick are obtained with difficulty. And the goal of aesthetic life for the sake of which I have gone forth from the household life into homelessness does not reach fulfillment by development for me. In that case, one should depart from that person any time, night or day. Even without taking leave of him, one should not continue to follow him. Here it is mainly talking about because, but we can still take it in our aspect as well as a lay people. If a person whom we are associating with, because of association with them, if the unwholesome qualities increase and the wholesome qualities decline, and also uh, the requirements of our daily life, here it is given like for the monks, it would be food, clothes, and shelter. Maybe uh, for our late life, it would be anything that uh, is concerned to like, depending upon the relationship we have with that person whom we are associating with. It would be a colleague or it would be a family member or it would be our old friends. Depending upon the different type of person, if the state of mind has any kind of hindrances, tightness or 
development of any unwholesome qualities then without even informing that them that we are going to leave them even if it's day or night we have to leave them it is being said here if one knows of a person when i associate with this person unwholesome qualities increase in me and wholesome qualities decline but the requisites of the life that should be obtained by one gone for robes arms food lodging and medicines and provisions for the sick are obtained without difficulty but still the goal of ascetic life for the sake of which i have gone forth from the household life into the homelessness does not reach fulfillment by development for me in that case having reflected one should depart from that person after taking leave of him one should not continue to follow him so here there is a slight difference uh, if there is a person whom we are associating with because of that association the unwholesome qualities increase and the wholesome qualities decline then we should not keep continuing associating with them uh, other than that uh, all the food probes like Uh, there is a change that is happening but the actual practice that they it's not happening so because of that we should leave that person informing them like we go to them and say okay this is the problem i am not uh, keeping my practice going i am not able to develop the full some qualities and then we take depart from them if one knows of a person when i associate with this person unwholesome qualities decline in me and wholesome qualities increase but the requisites of life that should be obtained by one gone through for the sake of which i have gone from from the household life into homelessness teaches fulfillment by development for me in that case having reflected one should continue to follow that person one should not depart from him So uh, here they say if the person whom we are associating with, because of that association, there is increase in the wholesome qualities and decrease in the unwholesome qualities within us within our practice. Then, even if the requisites of food, clothes, and shelter has not been fulfilled, we should keep associating with them because it is fulfilling the qualities of. our practice our own mental development if one knows of a person when associate with when i associate with this person unwholesome qualities decline in me and wholesome qualities increase and the requisites of life that should be obtained by one gone for robes arms food lodging and medicines and provisions for the sick are obtained without difficulty and the goal of the aesthetic life for the sake of which i have gone forth from the household life into homelessness reaches fulfillment by development for me in that case one should continue to follow that person as long as one lives one should not depart from him even if one is dismissed so this is the fourth case where uh, wholesome qualities are increasing and unwholesome qualities are declining when we are associating with that person and also uh, food shelter medicines for the sick all of all of the requisites have been fulfilled then one should keep associating with that person as long as our lives are there even if we are like thrown away or just said no i cannot associate with you we should keep associating with them when it was said person's friend should be understood to be twofold those to be associated with and those not to be associated with it is because of this that it was said so this is the reason um, why it is said as persons has twofold like they have wholesome and unwholesome both in one side so we should associate with wholesome person and not to associate with unwholesome person okay next one is uh, regarding the robes 
arms, food, lodging, and villages or towns. Uh, do you want me to read all I mean this or I just skip okay. I just skip this part and then we'll move to the other sukta. Next sukta is uh, in book of ten. 10.61. Uh, it is on the page number 1415. Ignorance. This is the Sukta's name. Okay, 61 and 62. These are the two Suktas that we are going to read from this. Ignorance and craving. Both of the suktas are almost similar. I'll see the difference as we keep continuing. Because this is said, a first point of ignorance, because, is not seen such that before this there was no ignorance and after it came into being. Still, ignorance is seen to have a specific condition. I say, students, that ignorance has a nutriment. It is not without nutriment. And what is the nutriment for ignorance? It should be said, the five hindrances. The five hindrances too, I say, have a nutriment. They are not without nutriment. And what is the nutriment for the five hindrances? It should be said, the three kinds of misconduct. Bodily misconduct, mental misconduct and verbal misconduct. The three kinds of misconduct too, I say, have a nutriment. They are not without nutriment. And what is the nutriment for the three kinds of misconduct? It should be said, Non-restraint of the sense faculties. Non-restraint of the sense faculties too, I say, has a nutriment. It is not without nutriment. And what is the nutriment for the non-restraint of the sense faculties? It should be said, lack of mindfulness and clear comprehension. Lack of mindfulness and clear comprehension too, I say, has a nutriment. It is not without nutriment. And what is the nutriment for lack of mindfulness and clear comprehension? It should be said, careless attention. Careless attention too, I say, has a nutriment. It is not without nutriment. And what is the nutriment for careless attention? It should be said, lack of faith. Lack of faith too, I say, has a nutriment. It is not without nutriment. And what is the nutriment for lack of faith? It should be said, not hearing the good Dhamma. Not hearing the good Dhamma too, I say, has a nutriment. It is not without nutriment. And what is the nutriment for not hearing the good Dhamma? It should be said, not associating with good friends, good person. So, this is how the Sukta starts. Here the Buddha say, uh, says to the bhikkhus, saying, we cannot say that it is starting point of ignorance or after this point, it is no ignorance or okay, um, before this there was never ignorance, before this there, there is ignorance or this is much ignorance has gone or this much ignorance has been. And what is the cause of ignorance? Or what is the nutriment for ignorance? Ignorance has nutriment as five hindrances. And the five hindrances have its nutriment as three kinds of misconduct. And one does the three kinds of body Mis misconducts because it has nutriment as non-restraint of the sense faculties and this non-restraint of sense faculties has its nutriment as lack of mindfulness and clear comprehension and lack of mindfulness and clear comprehension has its nutriment as careless attention 
and careless attention has a nutriment as lack of faith. Lack of faith has nutriment as not hearing to good Dhamma. And not being able to hear the good Dhamma has a nutriment of not associating with good friends. Thus, not associating with good persons, becoming full, fills up not hearing the good Dhamma. Not hearing the good Dhamma, becoming full, fills up lack of faith. Lack of faith, becoming full, fills up careless attention. Careless attention, becoming full, fills up lack of mindfulness and clear comprehension. Lack of mindfulness and clear comprehension, becoming full, fills up non-restraint of the sense faculties. Non-restraint of the sense faculties, becoming full, fills up the three kinds of misconduct. The, the three kinds of misconduct, becoming full, fills up the five hindrances. The five hindrances, becoming full, fills up ignorance. Thus, this is nutriment for ignorance. And this and in this way, it becomes full. So this is how it starts. What happens if we do not have good friends? If we do not have good friends, we cannot hear to the good Dhamma. When we cannot hear the good Dhamma, we do not have faith. And when we do not have faith, our attention becomes careless. And when our attention is careless, we do not have mindfulness. And when there is no mindfulness, we do not keep any restraint of our senses. Okay, whatever we see, whatever we hear, whatever we taste, there is no mindfulness, there is no restraint. So we start craving and we start causing ourselves suffering. And because there is no restraint of the sense faculties, even in the mind, if there are thoughts, it becomes like, keep on thinking. When this happens, there is three kinds of misconduct that can happen. That is through our bodily action, through our verbal action, through our mental action, we start behaving misbehaving. And there is misconduct in these actions. And when there is these three kinds of misconduct, then we are filling up the hindrances. Then we start like breaking these precepts and then the hindrances keep coming up. And because there is hindrances coming up, hindrances becoming filled, then the mind gets occupied and we act ignorantly. So this is the nutriment for our ignorance. Directly he's saying if you if you do not have good friends, then you do not, then you will be ignorant. This is saying like that. And then uh, the Buddha gives a gives a single word here. He compares this process to the rains, rain drops. Just as when it is raining and the rain pours pours down in thick droplets on a mountain top. The water flows down along the slope and fills the cliffs, gullies, and creeks. These becoming full fills up the pools. These becoming full fills up the lakes. These becoming full fills up the streams. These becoming full fills up the rivers. And these becoming full fills up the great ocean. Thus, there is nutriment for the great ocean and in this way it becomes full. So too, not associating with good persons, becoming full, fills up not hearing the good Dhamma. Not hearing the good Dhamma, becoming full, fills up lack of faith. Lack of faith, becoming full, fills up careless attention. Careless attention, becoming full, fills up lack of mindfulness and clear comprehension. Lack of mindfulness and clear comprehension becoming full, fills up non-restraint of sense faculties. Non-restraint of the sense faculties becoming full, fills up the three kinds of misconduct. The three kinds of misconduct becoming full, fills up five hindrances. The five hindrances becoming full, fills up ignorance. Thus, there is nutriment for ignorance and in this way it becomes full. So here the Buddha is comparing to the raindrops being 
filling up the ocean in that way having a good friends having not having good friends can cause us filling up the ignorance now it's the vice versa of the same thing i guess you know uh, it is different then we'll go to that part as well i say students that true knowledge and liberation have a nutriment they are not without nutriment and what is the nutriment for true knowledge and liberation it should be said the seven factors of enlightenment the seven factors of enlightenment too i say have a nutriment they are not without nutriment and what is the nutriment for the seven factors of enlightenment it should be said the four establishments of mindfulness the four establishments of mindfulness too i say have a nutriment they are not without nutriment and what is the nutriment for the four establishments of mindfulness it should be said the three kinds of good conduct the three kinds of good conduct too i say have a nutriment they are not without nutriment and what is the nutriment for three kinds of good conduct it should be said the restraint of the sense faculties the restraint of the sense faculties too i say has a nutriment it is not without nutriment and what is the nutriment for restraint of the sense faculties it should be said mindfulness and clear comprehension mindfulness and clear comprehension too i say have a nutriment they are not without nutriment and what is the nutriment for mindfulness and clear comprehension it should be said careful attention careful attention too i say has a nutriment it is not without nutriment and what is the nutriment for careful attention it should be said faith faith too i say has a nutriment it is not without nutriment and what is the nutriment for faith it should be said hearing the good dhamma hearing the good dhamma too i say has a nutriment it is not without nutriment and what is the nutriment for hearing the good dhamma it should be said associating with good persons so just now we saw how knowledge and liberation is related to good friends like because for the knowledge and liberation to arise we need seven factors of enlightenment and the first seven factors of enlightenment we need the four establishments of mindfulness and for that we need the three kinds of good conduct and then we need for it to have we need restraint of the sense faculties for the restraint of sense faculties we need mindfulness and clear comprehension for mindfulness and clear comprehension we need careful attention for careful attention we need faith for faith we need to hear the good dhamma for hearing the good dhamma we need to have good friendship thus associating with good friends becoming full fills up hearing the good dhamma hearing the good dhamma becoming full fills up faith faith becoming full fills up careful attention careful attention becoming full fills up mindfulness and clear comprehension mindfulness and clear comprehension becoming full fills up restraint of the sense faculties restraint of the sense faculties becoming full fills up the three kinds of good conduct the three kinds of good conduct becoming full fills up the four establishments of mindfulness the four establishments of mindfulness becoming full fills up the seven factors of enlightenment the seven factors of enlightenment becoming full fills up true knowledge and liberation thus 
there is nutriment for true knowledge and liberation and in this way they become full so this is what the buddha is saying here that having good friends is the way that you can get your mind liberated and experience the true knowledge so having good friends we can associate having associated with them we can hear the good dhamma talk and having hearing being able to hear the good dhamma talk we develop faith on the practice and having developed faith we start practicing and we start developing careful attention and then having developed careful attention developing the wholesome qualities we start the mindfulness and clear comprehension we start like differentiating this is wholesome and this is unwholesome and then having mindfulness and clear comprehension we start restrain the sense faculties this restraining of sense faculties is very much important for all the practitioners because if we do not have mindfulness we do not have clear comprehension and we are careless then our minds start like going into the sense faculties and holding on to them craving and clinging and they ultimately make us less mindful and maybe at times we just get dipped into them and no more mindfulness is established so one has to be restrained in the sense faculties and then when we are restrained in the sense faculties then we can we act in the good way of three actions the bodily action the verbal action and the mental action and having done this then the mind establishes in our the mind four establishments of mindfulness having this then the seven factors of enlightenment and when the seven factors of enlightenment become meaningful the true knowledge and liberation comes into fulfillment just as when it is raining and the rain pours down in thick droplets on a mountain the water flows down along the slope and fills the cliffs gullies and creeks these becoming full fills up the pools these becoming full fills up the lakes these becoming full fills up the streams these becoming full fills up the rivers and these becoming full fills up the great ocean thus there is nutriment for the great ocean and in this way it becomes full so to associating with good persons becoming full fills up the hear good dhamma fills up hearing the good dhamma hearing the good dhamma becomes full fills up faith faith becoming full fills up careful attention careful attention becoming full fills up mindfulness and clear comprehension mindfulness and clear comprehension becoming full fills up restraint of the sense faculties restraint of the sense faculties becoming full fills up the three kinds of good conduct the three kinds of good conduct becoming full fills up the four establishments of mindfulness the four establishments of mindfulness becoming full fills up the seven factors of enlightenment the seven factors of enlightenment becoming full fills up true knowledge and liberation thus there is nutriment for the true knowledge and liberation and in this way they become full so this sutta has a lot of uh, repetition but actually when we read all this repetition then our mind gets like truly gets established or it, it keeps reminding us later on in our practice as well so i just kept reading the repetition part as well Let's get on now. The time is already thirty. Um, Mrs. Sindhu, I was just looking ahead at the next few suttas. So the next two sets of suttas are quite interesting because um, there's actually a lot of repetition. Uh, um, 
So uh, just a suggestion. Uh, so next Sunday, Dr. Madhusudanji is coming on. I was wondering if we could do the next two sets um, the following Sunday with you. Uh, I'm not sure if you are available on the uh, 31st of December. That's New Year's Eve, though. Uh, <laughs> um, if not, um, then I'm, I'm happy to do the reading with the class. Um, but like you say, I, I think there's quite some value in that. It's almost like, you know, when we were reading the Chachaka Sutta, with the amount of repetition sometimes, um, I think it benefits the listener um, if they just listen to it, the reading, without necessarily, necessarily reading uh, the book. What do you think? Or what does um, anyone in the call today, uh, anyone would like to share their opinion uh, on this suggestion? Uh, so silence means uh, consent, I assume. <laughs> what, what do you think, uh, Mrs. Sindhu? Uh, I think it's better we keep reading the suktas along with liber uh, repetition. And uh, mm. yes, we can read the Chachaka Sukta as well. Okay, so shall we do the next two sets in two weeks' time? Is Next, it's... you're saying in this uh, Amutra Nikaya? Uh, yeah, so if if it's okay with you, we can end this session here. And then the next two sets is 10, 155 uh, to 166, and 10, 199 to uh, 210. Let me see the pages are sorry, I lost it now. Uh, it's on uh, page number 1507. Ah, uh, 1507. Yeah, thank you. One five. Uh, 07. Oh, yeah. So on the printed book, it looks very short, but there's a lot of dot, dot, dot. So I think if we read it in the style that, you know, how Bante used to read the Chachaka Sutta in full, um, what do you think? Do you think there will be value in that? Yes, I think. And uh, what I'll do is uh, this first one that we just saw, um, 10.155 and 10 point all this from the 10.155 to 166 uh, I'll just prepare one something like a poster or just a presentation where uh, it becomes clear for us to read and also there is just the same thing the eightfold path and it uh, tenfold path it added a wrong view and wrong liberation right knowledge and right liberation mm -hmm. having read all of these 10 things it's a, uh, applied to all of the 10 suktas that is here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's quite similar, right? 10.199 uh, associate with a chapter on uh, persons. Of, yes. uh, I mean, the, the values are slightly different, but the the repetition... Resort to not resort to and then to, yeah... It's given um, mostly on the precepts here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think the lot the, these two sets are closely related, but are of um value. Um, as a kind of a reminder, you know, um, just to share my own experience after we did the reading. When was it? The first reading on the spiritual friendship, right? Because that you know. A lot of times, um, um, other than this group, you know, due to work, 
colleagues. Um, yeah, I mean, ge generally, I I I'm associating. I mean, at work sometimes it's difficult, right? Because we don't really have a choice of um, who we uh, work with as as a team. Uh, well, having said that, we do have a choice to a certain extent, right? Um, what I'm trying to say is, uh, many times, you know, sometimes I have to doubt, like, oh, I, you know, I don't feel like I, I fit in to a social setting at work, um, or um, a kind of conversation on idle chatter. You know, I feel like, mm, should I uh, participate in, you know, in order to just fit in, you know what I mean? So that to, in order to build that, build that working relationship or, or at least um, uh, look as though I am part of the team in order to build that working relationship healthier. But when we went through all these sessions on spiritual friendship and the, especially today's reading on how, you know, I really particularly like the most recent one uh, and the simile that the Buddha gave, how from the raindrops it leads to the sea and, and very clearly how starting from having good association, it clearly leads in, in that uh, direction. So, you know, it just by reflecting that, and then it, it made me kind of realize that, oh, there's really nothing for me to worry about. <laughs> you know, I I shouldn't even have to think about it. You know what I mean? There's there should be no doubt, uh, whatsoever, whether it is for work or um because I teach music part-time, right? So um, just this afternoon, this morning, this afternoon, I had an activity and in a social setting, you know, there will be people who are more, um, you know, everybody is good. Nobody wants to be bad, right? But what each person values as good and bad differs at different uh, degrees, right? And also because of no fault of their own, they have not come into contact with the teachings of the Buddha and what the five precepts are. And it is, I, I don't see myself as a duty to explain that to people who are not ready, right? But what I, you know, when we are going through these sessions, I, I, I what I value is that by reading these together and by having this discussion together, it gives the support and the encouragement that especially as lay people, uh, we come into contact daily. We have no control uh, with, with people who may never come into contact with, with the Buddha Dharma, um, you know, and that's fine. And we have to learn how to, to live with that, but also to have the faith and the confidence that it's okay. So I don't know about other listeners, but personally, I find that, oh, this is excellent encouragement that it's okay to if we feel like we are the odd one out in our community, because in reality, when, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Mrs. Sindhu and other listeners as well, but it's all about energies. What we um, practice, the, the positive mindset and also uh, all these qualities, like attracts like. And so perhaps, you know, when I think to myself, ah, oh, it, it could be that the reason I find myself in a, a, a social setting of a certain kind uh, could be because in the past, my practice of wholesome qualities isn't good enough. 
you know what I mean? But but now that I'm aware, okay, now is the time to set the wheel in motion, so to speak, but in a different direction. And have that confidence that by doing so, hopefully, it will start something else in motion. And so I can hopefully, with confidence, close this chapter and open uh, a, a more positive chapter that will, uh, how to say, um, support in the uh, uh, this uh, so-called journey. Yes. Yeah. yeah, sorry for being so yeah. long-winded, but I hope that was of value. <laughs> Um, thank you for sharing actually I really appreciate the way you opened up about your own personal experiences as well because in reality even in my personal life when I uh, used to be in a social environment even during college or maybe in some other age it was quite different the way people are used to associate with and the friends in the home there was no spiritual inclination. Of course, there was, but it was not as deep as I didn't know what the basic precept was, what generosity was. And the generosity was like, okay, we give something like an offering, like the amount or maybe just food. That was all materialistic. But coming into this practice, the associating that I have now in a spiritual manner to through my family, which I got introduced to, the way the generosity has changed me or my family, it's not only through the materialistic giving, it's through mental giving, through verbal giving, and it's also through our bodily acts of generosity. And it's also uh, good that it always starts with friendship. And it's also a good person, good friend, companion. The way we are reading these suttas and the way we are continuing this group every Sunday, it's clearly energizing our whole week's experience. I think Sachin wants to add. Yes, uh, really May has told the uh, opinions about Tamma. Like I would like to say a statement uh, which we, which you may be knowing. If you take care of Dhamma, Dhamma will take care of you. <laughs> like uh, here Delson says that taking care of Dhamma is like uh, Basically, following the precepts, maintaining the precepts, and practicing the meditation, and cultivating the wisdom. If we maintain it, automatically Dhamma takes care of us. Hmm. It's true that uh, in May case, in our case also, like we experience that if we take care in a Dhamma in good way, definitely Dhamma will take care of us in situations which whatever they are arising situation. And I just want to add something here. Uh, today morning, I was uh, listening to I and Sachin were both listening to the Dhamma talk uh, of Ajahn Kevali. He has visited re India recently. So he was giving a talk at Mahabodhi, Bangalore. So uh, there were a few children who were you know, taking a Dhamma school on Sunday. Uh, he gave a short suggestion to him. I think it was wonderful and it's applied to everybody. He gave that even if uh, people, other people, who ask you to do something that is bad, you stop there. Don't do it on force as well. But uh, if uh, don't hesitate or don't uh, like down yourself from doing good, keep doing good because this is the path and that you don't like, don't even look at those people who ask you to do something that is unwholesome. And just keep doing the wholesome, keep practicing the Dhamma, keep in Dhamma in your heart, open up your heart, just feel the uh, Dhamma, practice the Dhamma. He said, and I feel like that's true. There are people outside who are non-Dhamma practitioners, who are whose way of uh, thinking is quite different than ours. And it's difficult for us to like uh, let them understand what we are doing, but rather we just keep Calm and uh, morning also we attended uh, another Dhamma talk session in the morning uh, where the reader has read uh, Abhaya Sukta to Prince Abhaya where it said 
uh, even if it's true, if it's factual, if the time is not right, we should not speak to them, They're, even if it's true, because it's going to hurt them. And sometimes, uh, as you said, may in a company uh, or a social environment, for the communication or for not being odd of them, uh, our mind sometimes might just get involved in those thoughts. But uh, what uh, I asked uh, in my retreat experience was on the last day or so, we start like uh, talking to each other and our mind just keeps saying, it's just, uh, it doesn't make any sense if I talk to other person or not. But it just want to know where is that person from? What is she doing? It just want to know. But making sure we should be wise enough to not cling to that as well. Like, okay, we want to ask when the conditions are right, when the person is like to open up, then we can ask. But we just not go and bang our all questions from our mind to them. And so from other environment uh, where if they are, there is chattering that's going on, they are chit chatting. And I think regarding chit chatting, regarding the unwholesome that is happening con in conversation, Sachin deals with them like each and every day and he just converts in uh, that those topics into wholesome ways. He brings up the topic of generosity or maybe uh, he's like, the one who does all those things in our crew and he does it very good. Sachin, would you like to add something? Yes, yes. Uh, just I want to tell you about uh, Ajan Kevali. Ajan Kevali is an abode of uh, International Forest Monastery in Thailand, actually. He visited India in Mahabodhi Society. Then he has given a talk. He was in the talk also. He mentioned that uh, difficult thing to do is to be doing nothing. <laughs> Fine. Anybody has a question or anything that they want to say? I'd be happy to hear from the practitioners as well because this is where we connect ourselves we keep the practice going in our life we like it's like practical exams that are going on in our life where we can keep using the dhamma as an example it's not only just the sitting meditation just we sit for one hour or two hours and then it's done no it is all time practice and it's so practical that every moment we can see the dhamma we can connect with this dhamma May are you fine? Yes, yes, I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, I uh, I'm going through a, a actually it's it's been about a month or two now, so it's a healing process. Uh, and uh, actually, about two three weeks ago, I was ill physically, okay. um, but it also came from a lot of uh, expectations and work stress and not taking care of myself. So I realized also that the uh, uh, physical aspect, so especially for uh, those of us who uh, have to work uh, where we are seated in front of the computer, let's say for a certain amount of period of time, uh, you know, because it's too easy to, to get stuck in work, let's say for two to three hours uh, for a long period without realizing I realized that um, bodily movement is very important uh, in order to keep the mental state still quite uh, okay. And then I tried to relate that to how when Bante used to say, uh, when we are in long sittings, I don't know if people remembered, but he used to even advise that if, if, if we are in retreats and we are sitting long hours, he said, uh, after we get up, we should go for high rigorous um movement mm -hmm. you know he even suggested do you remember he even suggested you know going up and down the stairs or walk briskly and at that time i i it didn't quite i i didn't quite understand the instruction you know i i i kind of had the faith that there must be some value in it but again due to ignorance or whatever i didn't ask the question 
further. Okay. But now that um, after I talk with some friends, you know, who are like in fitness and health, etc., and then I realize the value in that. There is health benefits in that. If we don't, uh, you know, and, and a friend of mine who is a fitness instructor, her whole family, so her, her, her mother, 70 plus years old, is still teaching aerobics. Um, her dad did Iron Man like a couple of years ago. So the whole family's DNA is in fitness and health, yeah? And she reminded me, she said, our body, the human body, is not designed to be static for a few hours at length. We're, we're not designed that way. So there must be some form of movement. So then I start to realize, oh, Bhante must have discovered something or he must have read something somewhere uh, to realize that, you know, of course, in terms of the development of the mind, at some point when the mind is ready, we can sit long hours, right, to go further into um, the pathways, the jhanas, etc. But once that session is completed, we have to go for high, uh, I wouldn't say immediately high, you know, but I still remember he said, you know, see if you can go up and down the stairs or go up some up and down some slopes or something to activate some form of um, movement, um, especially in the legs or maybe even some cardiac activity. I don't know. Maybe Hugh, Hugh's not here, but maybe he knows some something about that. But this is just what I kind of was reflecting while going through a, a period of not feeling physically well. Um, and because I'm not highly cultivated. So when 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 physically I was unwell, the mental well-being um, yeah. is also yeah. not good. Yes. But as I'm going through this process of several months now, and when Mrs. Sindhu was talking about opening up the heart, etc., because now I'm I'm going back to using the forgiveness meditation as my primary uh, object or primary tool right now. And due to many things that I still need to work on, the healing process uh, is still continuing. And so sometimes when, you know, I, I could be in a conversation with someone and I could be a little bit emotional, I'm actually okay. But I realize also that part of the process of healing and opening the heart uh, is also uncovering a lot of, um, how should I put it? Mm, suppressed energies. If I'm, if I, if uh, yeah. for lack of a better term, suppressed energies or uh, suppressed negative emotions, and this could be due to previous meditation techniques, or it could be due to past habits. Either way, that doesn't really matter. And so the suppression over a long period of time actually closes the heart. Yes. And so one becomes an individual that one thinks is, you know, I'm of that certain character. And it comes back to the suttas as well, because the Buddha mentioned many times that, you know, he clearly said, you know, it is neither I am this or I am that, you know, in some of the suttas that we read, you remember? Um, so, yeah, so it's it's all very interesting for me the, the way that I'm seeing it you know and having the 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 teaching to constantly remind ourselves that whatever it is it's not me it's not mine it's not myself it's just the process of going through it um and also with that kind of an understanding then there is not the suppression there is just the observation, whatever arises, forgive it. So if some of you might recall, uh, Sister Kema used to be quite good at this. She used to say, just forgive everything. 
you know, whatever that arises, forgive it, forgive it, and keep on uh, forgiving it. Uh, so just to share, I, I think, um, I don't know if it's the same for other students, for but for me, um, you know, sometimes certain things that Bhante Vimala Ramsey say or uh, Venerable Sister Kema used to say is in passing. Like, it, they mention it like that. And, and it's only sometimes that if we are careful enough, we pick it up, you know. Otherwise, it just goes like the, the wind. And so recently, as I keep uh, practicing, somehow, you know, sometimes in the practice, it's like something that they say in passing, mm -hmm. you know, just crops up. And I find that, you know, the very, very helpful, you know, the, the examples that I mentioned uh, just now. So for me, this whole process, in a way, is, is more exciting than it is um, emotional. For me, I'm I'm more interested in, um, oh, so where is this going to lead to? Do you know what I mean? Uh, maybe I sound a bit crazy, but I'm like, you oh, know, yes. if I if I can see how uh, this amount of suppressed energy, suppressed negative emotions, or suppressed whatever has been, uh, you know, for so long, and and this practice of really seeing as a, you know, this is not me, this is not mine, this is not myself, this is something of wherever, it doesn't really matter, but using Bhante Vimala Ramsey's uh, instructions to, you know, relax into it. He used to say many times, relax into it, and then, you know, when, it's, when the tension arises, just relax into it, release, relax, we smile, return, to the object of meditation. And when we go really deep into that particular kind of observation, not just on the surface level, but keep going in that direction really deep and using, you know, whatever that arises, just keep forgiving and forgiving and forgiving it, is actually a very powerful healing process. I, I I believe, yeah, and I'm not even talk. I'm I'm not even talking about jhanas here. I have not even talked about jhanas here. I'm just talking about the healing process, and I I truly believe that there are a lot of people out there who who have a lot of suppressed negative. Uh, emotions and I, I i truly believe that that this um path or this practice can do a huge amount of benefit uh, not only at the mental level but physically as well i think it can really be like a medicine and heal a lot of um bodily uh, physical issues even yeah yeah Sorry we, for being uh, so long. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> a really good experience. Uh, just I want to ask you, like, where do you stay in stay? You stay in Australia presently? Ah, yes. <laughs> you stay in Melbourne. Is it Melbourne? Not Melbourne. I live in just in the suburbs of uh, well, not Sydney, the city itself, but. The, the reason why I asked about this, like, uh, there is a, in Australia, there is a group of uh, swim students. Um, and there is a swim teacher. I think uh, you may be knowing. Uh, Sindhu, uh, you may recall her name, teacher name. Alice. Alice, Alice is a teacher of uh, uh, Dhamma. Yes. Dhamma we... You know, you know her? Yes, um, Alice is based in Perth. Uh, uh, actually, Perth. 
uh why i recall her name was like uh, there is an australian group uh which meets frequently i think alice is from melbourne i think i think yes melbourne um alice is from melbourne and my uh, brother and my sister in law also stays in melbourne and uh, they have one group uh, they read suttas on every thursdays on australian timing evening on thursday and uh, sometimes they visit uh, the home to read the suttas i think uh... you may if you are interested like you can connect to them and you will be associating with more wise <laughs> wise enough persons i feel it's my suggestion thank you i will give the contact number of my sister in law who stays in melbourne uh, she also does swim practice uh in not swim australia group you can join every thursday and they have last sunday uh, it was last on saturday i think on saturday there was a dhamma discussion at melbourne and one of the students home they all gathered there and they read suttas and uh, they had food together and they spend the time i will give the thank contact you. yes uh, thank you thank you so yes. much yes yes <laughs> welcome today morning i was reading taking up the morning hindi session i'm reading life is meditation and meditation is life book to them and uh, today i was reading the instructions to walking meditation and one timimla ram ji gave the instructions so precisely as the way now uh, may was talking it was exactly the same thing the bande was saying that walking meditation when we walk at a normal to a little energized to face then it energizes our body and it will stop sloth and torpor from arising and it is also a way that our mind starts to learn how to keep this practice going in our daily life as well and most of the time when we start the walking meditation our, our mind keeps wandering all over the place and thoughts keep coming up but being patient with those thoughts fixing those so those thoughts and having the practice of right effort the constant right effort then walking meditation and sitting meditation are like the same experiences you can go as deep in the sitting meditation and the walking meditation our mind can stay quite calmly in walking meditation as well and it's really important to keep like walking as well just energizing our body keeping the practice going and any form of the exercise you can just look at our mind and maybe just keep practicing the exercise just keep a smile and just relax we, we can do any exercises at home just so that our body gets energized it's really important nowadays and i think everybody pai j paul dr veeta jaya everybody is like practicing smiling and happy taking care of their own body as well anybody has a question no i think it has been a great discussion this week it will be useful to everybody and if there is something that i had read and i did not feel comfortable i ask for forgiveness as well okay let's hear some merit may suffering once be suffering free and the fear of fearless be may the grieving shed all grief and may and all beings find relief may all we all beings share this me that we have the supply for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness may be in our space and have the vast of my power may the spirit of our may the non-fiction sadhu 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 wishing all happiness to all thank you thank you thank you everyone for joining thank you thank you keep your practice going keep smiling
Bye.